We're ready. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Luis Gomez. I'm going to deliver a speech. Uh, the name of the speech is Lesson of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by Cesar Chavez. Cesar Chavez was a Latino American civil rights activist who was fighting for better labor conditions of the farm workers in California in the 1960s with non violence My friends, today we honor a giant among men. Today we honor the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King was a powerful figure of destiny, of courage, of sacrifice, and of vision. Few people in the long history of this nation can revolve his accomplishment, his reason, or his or his selfless dedication to the cause of peace and social justice. Today we honor a wise teacher, an inspiring leader, and a true visionary. But to truly honor Dr. King, we must do more than say word of praise. We must learn his lesson and put his view into practice so that we may truly be free at last. Who was Dr. King? Many people will tell you of his wonderful qualities and his many accomplishments. But what made him special to me? The truth many people don't want you to remember is that Dr. King was a great activist fighting for radical social change with radical methods. While other people talk about change, Dr. King used direct action to challenge the system. Dr. King wasn't afraid of tension. He welcomed it and used it wisely. In his famous letter from Birmingham jail, Dr. King wrote that the purpose of the direct action is to create a situation so crisis packed that it will inevitably open the door to negotiation. Dr. King was also radical in his beliefs about violence. He learned how to successfully fight hatred and violence with the unmistakable power of nonviolence. He once stopped an armed mob saying, we are not advocating violence. We want to love our enemies. I want you to love our enemies. Be good to them. This is what we believe by. We must meet hate with love. Dr. King knew that he very probably wouldn't survive the struggle that he led so well. But he said, if I am, if I am stopped, the movement will not stop. If I am stopped, our world will not stop. For what we are doing is right. What we are doing is just, and God is with us. My friends, as we enter a new decade, it should be clear to all of us that there is an unfinished agenda that we have miles to go before we reach the promised land. The man who rules this country today never learned the lesson of Dr. King. They never learned that non-violence is the only way to peace and justice. Our nations continue to wage war upon its neighbors and upon itself. The powers that be ruled over a racist society filled with hatred and ignorance, our nation continue to be segregated along racial and economic lines. The powers that be made themselves richer by exploiting the poor, our nation continue to allow children to go hungry and will not even house its own people. The time is now for people, all races and backgrounds, to sound the trumpet of change. As Dr. King proclaimed, proclaimed 
there comes a time when people get tired to being trumpet over by the idle feet of oppression. My friends, the time for action is to from us, the enemies of justice. Want you to think of Dr. Kim as only civil right leader, but he had much broader agent. He was tireless crusader for the right of the poor for an end to the war in Vietnam, long before it was popular to take that stand, and for the right of workers everywhere. Many people find it convenient to forget that Martin was murdered while supporting a desperate strike on that tragic day in Memphis, Tennessee. He died while fighting for the right sanitation for the right of sanitation workers. Dr. King's dedication to the right of the workers who are so often exploited by the forces of greed has profoundly touched my life and guide my struggle. During my first fast in 1968, King, Dr. King reminded me that our struggle was his struggle too. He sent me a telegram which said, our separate struggle are really one, a struggle for freedom, for dignity, and for humanity. I was profoundly moved that someone facing such a tremendous struggle himself will take the time to worry about a struggle taking place on the other side of the continent. Just as Dr. King was a disciple of Gandhi in Christ, we must now be Dr. King disciples. Dr. King challenged us to work for a greater humanity. I only hope that we are both in his challenge. The United Farm Workers are dedicated to carrying on the dream of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., my friend. I would like to tell you about the struggle of the farm workers who are waiting a desperate struggle for our rights, for our children's rights, and for our very lives. Like Dr. King, I too have dreams. I have dreamed that farm workers, and especially their children, won't have to fear their safety and even their very lives when they labor in fields. Many decades ago, the chemical industry promised the growers that pesticides will bring great wealth and bountiful harvest to the fields. Just recently, the experts are learning what farm workers and the truly organized farmers have known for years. The prestigious National Academy of Science recently concluded an exhaustive five years study which had determined that pesticides do not improve profit and do not produce more crops. What then is the effect of pesticides? Pesticides have created a legacy of pain and misery and death for farms, workers, and consumers alike. The court was posed in the greatest dance dangers and the focus of our struggle is the table great crop. This, pes this pesticide soaked the field. Drift with the wind, pollute the water, and are eaten by unwitting consumers. These poisons are designed to kill and pose a very real threat to consumers. And farm workers alike in the field are sprayed with pesticides. Like captain, paraton, post ring, and methyl bromide. This poison causes cancer, DNA, mutation, and horrible birth effect. The central valley of California is one of the wealthiest agricultural regions in the world. In its midst are clusters of children dying from cancer. The children live in communities surrounded by the great fields that employ their parents, 
their children, the children contact the poison when they play outside, when they drink the water, and when they hug their parents by turning from the, the field. And the children are dying. So, I asking you to support the movement to get better life, to get better life, to join the movement and to get a better life condition of farm workers and their families in California and California fields. Thank you.